Hello, Tom Watkins back with Fit Motion Graphics for the final part of this projection mapping tutorial series. So what we're going to do today is um, try and show you how to you can project onto absolutely any surface by uh, replicating the position of the projector with the camera in your 3D software. So we'll start off in Resolume, but all we're doing here is making ourselves a template to work around. So I'm just ch I'm going to chuck a couple of um, clips and effects and sources in. So we'll go with that line and spin again. Uh, chunk that up a little bit and make that spin around by itself. And we'll also just go with a solid colour as well. So just just so we've got um, some different clips to play with. And um, as we're doing this, I'll show you another little nice little tip, uh, possible way of doing uh, this output mapping. So in the input selection, we've only ever used uh, sending the full. Uh, composition to the output. What we're going to do here is going to use each of those different layers. So we're going to go to layer one and I'm going to set that to slice one and then in the output transformation I'm going to stick that just on one side of the boxes. So we're going to bung that on the left hand side here. So I'm not going to be anything like precise on this one because it's, you know, it's, a, it's a five minute job and we're trying to keep the tutorials under ten minutes so I'm just going to chuck this anywhere near the area just so you know what I'm talking about. So drag that one over there, and that's as, that's as precise as you're going to get out of me today. And we'll do another copy, just stick that one over there. So they're just on the left hand side there. We're going to go back into the input selection, and that's made a copy for each of those slices to go to each of these slices. And we're going to make a new one, and that calls itself slice 2, which is good. And we're going to use layer 2 for that. So that's those spinning lines. So back into the output transformation, I'm going to stick that on the right hand side of the boxes. So again, Drag and dump, click and drag, get those somewhere in the ballpark that we're looking at. So copy these again, duplicate that over, control dragging that down, and again right clicking, duplicating, and control dragging over that. So I've got a third slice as well, this is just going to be a wafer fin only, I can't see much of this, but we're going to do that with the um, layer 3, and that's just that big red solid, I'm going to stick that on the um, tops of these. So. Let's go with that corner there. And you'll barely be able to see this because the angle's um, yeah, really slight with the projector. But it does just help us uh, when we're trying to model this shape in a moment. So duplicate that, push that one down, and then another copy that would we that would stick. Don't know what's happening there. That wasn't the plan. Um, but yeah, so another copy of that one, and we stick that over that one. So you know, take your time, get in here. Line up these, line up the corners perfectly, but you don't want to watch me do that. So we'll just bring up one that I've made earlier, and um, that's that's what we're aiming for. It's just, you know, map out just so we get an idea of what the projector is seeing. I think the first time I did this, um, you know, I was just kind of making it up. I think I just put my camera, my phone in front of where the projector was, took a picture, and sort of did it that way. So you know, there's, there's different ways you can do it, and um, this obviously will give you quite a precise idea of what the projector is seeing. So I'm just going to full screen that out, I'm going to get a screen dump of that, so that's control, alt, and print screen. Uh, that's because you know, we've got these dual monitors, I think you have to press alt there as well, I'm not entirely sure. And uh, bring a Photoshop, uh, make a new page there, so control L, N, sorry, control N. So that's the size of the clipboard, that's fine, and we'll paste that in with a control V. And zoom in, control plus, and we'll bring up the mask with the letter M. And we'll just chop out the, uh, just the black area there, that's what the, that's what the projector is seeing. So I'll copy that, you know these, control C, make a new page, control N, I'm going to make that uh, PAL, which is the size that you know all the videos that I'm working at are. So make that PAL, okay that, whatever, and paste that in with a control V, and we'll adjust that with a control T. So dragging that to the edges, so now what I've made is a PAL dimensions still image of exactly what the projector is seeing, if projectors see things. So I'll save that out, and then we're going to take that into cinema. I'm going to try and replicate that exact shape in there. So save that, and we'll go and try and make it. Good, so we've got our reference image, and we're going to try and replicate that in cinema. So we'll bring in a new material, and we'll um, stick that uh, the image we just made, make it uh, on a background. So we'll bring that up here, background's in there, and we'll drop that on there, just so we know what we're aiming to make. Uh, but we don't need to see that right now. What we're going to do is push some cubes about. So bring one of those in. I'm going to make this the same size as the boxes that I own. I'm going to times everything by 10 though, just to make it so it uh, snaps a little bit easier. So the 45 centimeters in reality. 
I'm going to make those a lot bigger just so uh, everything snaps a little bit easier. I'll bring these settings down. Just don't need that to be that big. So uh, I'm going to rotate this by 45 degrees before I start moving anything else about. Just a bit easy to work out that angle. And I'll make a couple of copies of that just by control and dragging down. So middle mouse button brings us to the different views. I'll we'll zoom out a little bit. And number one button, push that up. And I'll just move these boxes about. So one over here, drag that down to 45 over there. This one will drag forward this way. And then the middle mouse button brings us to a different view. And we'll push this cube up in there. Good. So we've uh, made a copy of the shape. Um, so all we need to do now is put a camera in the same place as we've got the projector. And we're pretty much done. So I'll zero all of these out. So nothing for all these. And what I'm going to do is uh, actually got a measuring tape out and just measured the distance between the camera and the boxes, the projector and the boxes, sorry. So we're going to match those settings here. That came to about 4,300 and off the ground it was maybe about 12 and it's also a little bit offset to the side so stick 500 there and I don't know where that's put that, oh sorry that's minus 43. That's a little better. So that's a lot better. Um, and we just need to adjust the um, tilt and rotation of these as well, so bring that down, bring that there, and we're looking straight at those boxes. Um, one problem with that though is the focal length, and this is a bit of a mystery to me, I'm still yet to figure out exactly what's going on here. Obviously everyone's projector is different, uh, you know, you can zoom uh, zoom your projector into different lengths, so I'm, I'm guessing about 50 there, and then we can tweak these to try and get that lined up a bit better, so push that in a bit, and that's uh, probably about right. So um, bring the background back up and you know we're not far off there so what will help us out a little bit here is a new material and um, I'm just going to stick a bit of transparency on that so put that on there, just bring that down a little bit and I'll put that on the boxes and that means we can just see um, the reference material and, and the boxes we've made as well. So we're just going to try and line these up. Um, so I want to try and keep these pretty close, so uh, the number one button will actually move stuff about. What we want to do is try and not press that too much, because um, that's going to set these off. Um, so number three button, angle it, and just bring this down a little bit. I'm just trying to line these up as close as we can get it. So again, tweaking these you know, to get, get it lined up. and. It's again the longer you spend getting this, you know, the the better it's going to look. The less um, adjusting you'll have to do in Resolume. But we've not all, got all day, so we're going to stick with something that's you know, near us, and that's looking that's looking okay to me. These these numbers are pretty close to the measurement that I got with the measuring tape, so we're going to stick with that. And I'm just going to stick a quick material on here. Um, just so it's got a bit more interest, so when it is spinning around, you know, we're seeing something a bit more interesting. So I've just got a simple uh, image there. I'll drop on there and we'll get rid of that transparency. Okay. So maybe zoom in just a tap there. Just to... All good. So we don't need to see that background image anymore. We'll set uh, all these cubes to have a little spin round. Again, we'll bring this down to just one second and we'll stick a keyframe at the beginning, jump to the end. I'll spin those round by 90 degrees, so that'll end up at 135. So there's our animation, there's our boxes. We'll set that to render, we'll bring that into Resolume, and we'll be able to start to wrap this up. Great, so we're almost done then. So I'll bring in that clip, uh, wrap us up, put that in there, and I'll just uh, pause that at the beginning. So I would normally uh, put that clip into After Effects just to make a couple of, uh, you know, maybe colour correct it a bit and uh, set it out in the right codex. But for now, we'll just bring it straight into uh, Resolume just to finish it off. And we'll make a couple of tweaks in that advanced output just to get it lined up just dead on. So, you know, can add a couple of points there. As you can see, it's not, you know, not lining up quite flush. So just a few final, few final adjustments just to get everything exactly lined up. It's going to be tricky to get... Um, everything in cinema lining up exactly right so you, know, you can always just go in and make a couple of adjustments here and you know, if you do need to add more points you can always do that just to get everything dead on but you know there's, there's not much point going through that now uh, we can get the general idea with this so uh, let's close that out and we'll minimize the screen cap there and we'll press play on that and there we go 
So it's been a long, tedious and emotional journey to get us to here. We started off, you know, just making uh, those source effects inside the Resolume, moved on to uh, mapping onto 2D surfaces, and hopefully in this last part, I now get the idea about how we can uh, map onto absolutely any three-dimensional surface. Uh, you know, you can build that inside 3D software and then map that in Resolume. So. Yeah, you know, thanks for joining me for that. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you know, let us know in the comments. If you want me to come back and make any other, other further um, tutorials, you know, go into a bit more detail, do let us know. Might be able to do that in the future. But for now, uh, should wrap up this three-part introduction into projection mapping inside Resolume Arena. So it's Tom Watkins from Fit Motion Graphics. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.